you can see the title down below and it basically says that Flynn and Pender's not to blame <laughs> or Ian Flynn and Ken Pender's not to blame yeah it's yeah I know you probably think well, what do you mean by that well in case some of you don't know by now and you haven't been paying attention and if you have been, then this probably isn't that big of news to you. But apparently everything that's been going on in the comic is totally not their fault. Penders had no say in the characters being cut, had no nothing to do with it, apparently. And neither did Ian Flynn. Apparently, Ian Flynn and Ken Penders didn't have nothing to do with them. They were practically innocent of the whole scenario. And you might ask yourself, well, how is that? How can that be? Ian Flynn's the head writer. Ken Penders is suing for characters that he feels is his. Well, here's why they may not be at fault. You see, apparently Archie Comics is the ones that have been making some of the calls. If you don't believe me, I'll provide a friend's video where they kind of, in text and with music and visuals, kind of show you what I'm talking about. But apparently, a lot of things, a lot of some of the edits and stuff, have been all Archie Comics, and if not, a bit of Sega. Yeah, Sega and Archie Comics, in a sense, are the ones kind of causing a lot of these things to happen. Now, for what we understand, Archie Comics is doing it because they're taking some precautions. They're... They're kind of waiting, waiting it out. They're not taking any chances that something may happen. So, like, let's say if, you know, Ken Penders was to come out on top of this, which it doesn't sound like, we don't know yet, we don't know what's going on, then they don't have nothing to worry about. The characters are not involved with the stories anymore. And then, as far as Sega, they pretty much have stuck their nose into certain situations because, one... Obviously, it's the 20th anniversary of Sonic CD, and they want to focus on metal. And they got a whole situation there where they're kind of, you know, cutting, putting some restrictions on metal's characteristics, if you will. So, yeah. They, uh, yeah, basically, when you watch the video, you look at the links that my friend provided in his description you'll pretty much see that it seems that Ken Penders and Ian Flynn are not really at fault here. Now some people might say, well, Ken Penders really didn't help the situation by doing what he's done. That might be true, but is it the other way around? Is it Archie the ones that said, hey, look, you, got, you don't own these characters. When you worked for us and you made these characters for the stories, you essentially, whether you want to admit it or not, signed the characters over to us. So... I, I, I don't know. Something's going to give. Yeah, if I, I mean, it's like I said in another video that they actually, through the notions, one of the notions, if you will, acknowledgement things, whatever you call it, notion buttons that you can click on the uh, on the video, where they referenced my video, where I said, I feel something good's going to come out of this, and I still do. Because like I said, why in the world would the encyclopedia include Julie Sue, include the Brotherhood, include the Dark Egg Legion? Why would, in a sense, why would, in a sense, if you will, you know, why, in a sense, if you will, would the, um, you know, why would Saffron be in there? Why would Jeffrey St. John be in there? You know, things like that. These are, these are questions, folks, that a lot of people want to know and have the answers to. And why? And, you know, why all of a sudden that even though with SBO taking Jeffrey's uh, place on the cover of the Sonic Selects, why is all the other stories uncut and unedited? What's the deal? And I feel something good is going to come out of this. I think, in a sense, right, I think, in a sense what's going on with Archie Comics and if they are the ones and it seems that they are along with Sega if they're the ones to blame for what's happened Evan, if you will if they're the ones to blame along with Sega in some areas then you know apparently like I said Pen Pender, Ken Penderzine Flynn had nothing to do with it I mean 
Ken Penders even, I mean not Ken Penders, but Ian Flynn even said that because of what's happened, that originally Shard and the Krazood were never meant to be in the comic. They were never meant to be in the the final chapter, if you will, the final, you know, port, final uh, part of this endangered species sub arc. They were never originally supposed to be part of it. And, and, and my friend, basically, my f- subscriber and friend, basically says, or basically shows you exactly what that means, because it was two different covers. Ones where the Krizud had, ones where metal knuckles didn't have no vines, and one where he does. So it kind of tells you that these were last minute alterations. And when you take a look at the fan reaction to it, you know, it's no doubt, uh, there's no doubt why fans kind of feel that, hey, this was a letdown, that there should have been more to this, and that there obviously was more planned. And hopefully Ian Flynn will get the chance to do, show what was originally planned. I mean, it's like I said in this two-part video I did before about this anonymous source, and pretty much a lot of you have probably seen who that is. They are behind-the-scenes source, and they somehow have shown exactly what was originally planned to be. So hopefully Ian Flynn will have the opportunity to go back down the line and showcase what was supposed to be. So, you know, because apparently it sounds like the DEL was supposed to be the ones that were going to help in the de-robotization process, and the Krazood, for right now, were brought in to take that place. And that maybe Thrash wasn't meant to really do what he's done, or perhaps he was meant to do what he's done, and maybe he wasn't supposed to go in the direction it did because of the lawsuit. But... Apparently, you know, like it said, the title says below, Ian Flynn and Ken Penders not at fault? I mean, they're asking that question, and it seems that they aren't, aren't, aren't really at fault here. I mean, I think, I think someone said that Ken Penders even mentioned something down the line to where he had nothing to do with this. He had nothing to do with the removal of the characters, and that, that was all Archie's doing, or someone said that. I think TSSZ reported that. So, what do you think? What's your take on this? Do you think... Ken Penders, do you think Ken Penders and Ian Flynn are not at fault at all? I mean, I know some people might say, well, Ken Penders shouldn't, shouldn't have first sued anybody or else he wouldn't have been countersued or whatever. Do you think they're at fault? Do you think perhaps Ian Flynn's at fault? Oh, because maybe he timed, maybe doing this arc was timed, doing its arc was probably doing... Do you think Ian Flynn's at fault for doing this arc at the wrong time, especially with all this? Or do you agree that they're not at fault, and that the real people to blame are Archie Comics and possibly Sega? Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you later. But, do you agree?